In this video, we're gonna talk about wholesaling real estate in a recession, okay? So if you've ever wanted to get into wholesaling real estate or if you're already wholesaling real estate and you've been paying any attention at all to the media and kind of what is going on in the world, then this video is for you, okay? So, like I said, um, you know, the question really is, is can you or can you not wholesale in a recession? And kind of what are the different things to consider when, you know, considering wholesaling real estate, okay, or proceeding in the industry that you've clearly already chosen. First, let's talk about the market and the economy a little bit so I can explain to you, um, you know, kind of what my actual thoughts are and back them up a little bit with statistics, okay? So, you know, look, the market is the market, right? And market cycles are going to happen. So, if you have been paying attention to the media and you've been watching what is going on, then just realize that this is just part of a market cycle, okay? At the end of the day, you've got bear markets, you have bull markets, and obviously you have different things like black swan events. There's also things to consider like how there are event-driven recessions and also just economic-driven recessions, okay? And I'm not gonna get too far into that in this video. I am going to get right to the point of wholesaling real estate and if that is possible in a recession, but I do want to just kind of cover the bases a little bit. Now again, I'm not over here hoping for a recession, okay? As you'll find um, if you stay till the end of the video that I do think there is a decent amount of opportunity in general going into a recession, but I'm also not hoping that like people lose their jobs and go bankrupt and all of these crazy things that are happening. Obviously, that is nobody's intention. Nobody wants those things to happen. I mean, it's not ideal for anybody. At the end of the day, um, you know, it is what it is. As you probably know, since Ronald Reagan, the dollar is not back to the gold standard anymore. Now again, without getting too much into it, that just essentially, in my opinion, creates for um, you know, more cycles, right? Essentially, it shortens that curve a little bit to where you know, the actual uh, bear and bull market happens more frequently. Essentially, the government's just continuously pumping money into the economy to stimulate the economy. And again, if you're watching the media right now, we have a bill that might even pass in the next couple of days um, that will probably be one of the biggest stimulus bills ever recorded in history. Now, the average recession is every four to five years. And as you probably know, it has been about 10 years since the last recession. And I don't know if you're watching this video, if you experienced that recession or not, you might've been too young. I was a little bit too young. Um, I was already kind of an entrepreneur, okay? I wanted to get in the world of entrepreneurship and like starting businesses and like, you know, whatever, right? But at the end of the day, I was young and I don't remember the last recession the way that my parents or even like my grandparents remember it. So depending on uh, what age you were, you know, you may or may not have actually remembered the last recession, but that was about 10 years ago. Basically, with everything happening right now, economists and financial gurus are predicting that we may be headed into recession if we aren't already. And for a lot of people, it's very alarming, right? I know a lot of people are getting laid off, unemployment is on the rise, and at the end of the day, you know, these aren't easy times for a lot of people. Okay, but the good news is, is that riches are made in a down market. And we all know that knowledge is power, and if you can anticipate and prepare in any industry, then ultimately you can be prepared to take advantage of a recession. We've all heard the quote by Warren Buffett, to be greedy when others are fearful, and to be fearful when others are greedy. Now, Warren Buffett is obviously one of the richest men on the planet. You've gotta be prepared, right? You've gotta be able to anticipate um, and you've gotta be able to look at the facts and say, okay, I'm either gonna be on the left side of this thing or I'm gonna be on the right side of this thing, but regardless, whatever is meant to happen, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. So let's go ahead and jump into it and talk about how to better prepare yourself in a declining market heading towards, if we're not already, in that recession. Okay. Talking about wholesaling, one of the biggest things you can do is to liquidate, right? You can obviously look at your life and you can say, and again, I don't know if you're a seasoned wholesaler. I don't know if you're brand new. I don't know if you're just looking to get into real estate right now. Maybe wholesaling real estate isn't even something you've ever thought about, but somehow or another, you landed on this video. And um, I just want to say that there is a lot of money to be made, but you have to have a little bit of money, okay? Um, just like any other industry, you can't just, you know, have zero dollars, okay, to your name 
and get into any business and make money. So I would just encourage you to, you know, get rid of anything that you don't actually need. Basically, any liabilities that you need at this point are probably things that I would consider getting rid of and just selling off because you're going to be in a much better position, not only financially, but mentally as well, to actually take advantage of this, right? To actually be able to get into the business, to make money when other people maybe are struggling and not making money and ultimately set up yourself and your family and your future family um, for when this thing all blows over, which it will, um, to actually you know, have a foundation, right? To, to be able to then build off of the foundation going back into a bull market, which again, is not a matter of if, but simply just a matter of when. Another thing you can do as a wholesaler is to start dialing in your marketing a little bit more and start targeting lists that have a higher probability of selling. Now, these are obviously people that have a higher probability of selling in a recession, okay? So these are people that maybe are getting a divorce, right? And obviously, we know that if you look at the statistics, okay, money is the number one reason in America for divorce. So at the end of the day, if people are losing their jobs and they're getting laid off and they can't afford to pay their rent, then ultimately that causes stress in any relationship and that will cause people to get a divorce. It'll cause people to do crazy things. So these are people that you wanna be targeting and you wanna have a solution to their problem if you're looking to getting into wholesaling, okay, or if you already are, in a recession, right? We're, we're thinking outside of the box here and we're thinking who is the most likely to sell their house in a recession? Okay, now we talked about divorce. Another one is going to be pre-foreclosures or foreclosures, okay? Another terminology for this would be a notice of default. Now, essentially, all these are are people that can't afford to pay their mortgage, right? They got behind on their mortgage payments for whatever reason and they get a notice of default saying, hey, you've defaulted on your mortgage, right? They get it from the bank, the bank gives them so much time to get current on their mortgage, they don't get current on their mortgage, and then it goes into what they call a pre-foreclosure, which will eventually lead to an actual foreclosure, which is what you've probably seen on TV and different other various social media outlets where the property actually goes to auction, right? You can actually go to your local courthouse and you can actually buy these properties at the auction. But what I would suggest that you do is beat all of that to the chase and get to the homeowner, get to the seller way before it ever goes to the auction. So you can actually provide a solution before they actually have to lose their home to the auction. Ultimately, these sellers will be way, way, way better off if you can provide a solution before it has to get to that point. I know a lot of sellers that could have put money in their pocket and walked away and started a new life, but instead they lost their property to foreclosure because nobody told them, right? Nobody explained to them how they could actually navigate and get around the scenario or the circumstance that they got themselves in. Okay, so let's dive into this a little bit more. Is wholesaling easier or is it harder, you know, when going into recession? I know there's a lot of controversy on this and I know that in the wholesaling community, okay, um, you know, I hear people talk about it, right, from time to time. I mean, even when we were in a good market, um, people would talk about it from time to time, okay? Like, what are we gonna do in a recession? And, you know, what I want to kind of talk about right now is that um, you've gotta remember, in a good market, in my opinion, things are actually a bit harder for multiple different reasons. And I'm gonna explain that right here, but one of those reasons is that, I mean, plain and simple, there's more wholesalers, right? Right off the bat, I mean, you have more competition. There's more people trying to buy the property, right? So essentially what you have is you've got all of this saturation, let's call it, of people trying to buy the same properties, right? Because there's actually less people selling because there's less distress in the market and there's more people buying because more people are doing good at their job, they're making decent money, they all want a side income, okay? They all want a side hustle, right? Especially in 2020, everybody wants a side hustle. So everybody and their mom is getting into wholesaling real estate and at the end of the day, that causes what, I mean, I would call it not total saturation, but at the end of the day, it causes a lot of competition. You've got to remember in a good market, it is essentially what you would call a seller's market, right? Meaning that the seller, um, you know, they feel like they're in control. They can get whatever they want for the property. They look at Zillow and Zillow says that the property is worth $385 million, okay? Uh, and I know if you're anything like me, you've heard this time and time and time again. Um, and, and if you're brand new to wholesaling, you will, right? In the next market where we're just in on this bull market, bull run, 
seller's market, you know, it's very difficult to find a good deal. Obviously, there's always people that need to sell, but it is way less and is few and far between. But let's talk really quick about what happens at the initial downturn, okay? What happens is that there's a lot of fear, right? A lot of anxiety, a lot of uncertainty in the market, right? A lot of uncertainty, by the way, not only with the seller, but with buyers. And I'm not even talking about with just traditional buyers. I'm talking about cash buyers, okay? There's just a lot of uncertainty overall. Now, what comes along with those types of emotions, right? Fear, anxiety, uncertainty, okay? What comes along with those types of emotions is again, what we talked about a minute ago, which is way less people right off the bat doing anything, right? Way less sellers are selling initially. Initially, way less buyers are buying. Initially, a lot of wholesalers actually probably get out of the business because it slows down initially, right? It slows down and all these wholesalers that are doing one deal a month or two deals a month, okay? They can't afford to be in the business because their marketing costs and their overhead actually are, are more than their net profit, right? Meaning they're not making any money, so they're actually forced initially to get out of the industry. A lot of real estate agents get out of the industry. You have to remember, a lot of real estate agents do not make a lot of money. I think the average real estate agent that gets a real estate license in America, according to NAR, I think it is like 87% of those people within two years fail. They never close a deal. They don't make any money, right? Of the 13%, how many of them are actually making a good income? And how many of those people have reserves Okay, put away for something like this, a black swan event that just happens out of nowhere. I can tell you, rest assured, that most agents, right, most wholesalers, most of these people do not have a savings account, right? They do not have an emergency fund, which I should probably talk about more on this channel because at the end of the day, these are things that are crucial for you to have, you know, because you can't predict everything, right? Nobody has a crystal freaking ball that they can just predict all of these crazy things that can happen in the market. Okay, more good news. Dropping out of the wholesaling game or not pursuing wholesaling. If you're brand new to wholesaling, you're brand new to my channel, that, is, that does not have to be the answer, right? You can very much get into wholesaling and we're gonna talk about exactly how you can do that right now. So what you've gotta consider is why do people sell, right? We talked about this a minute ago. They sell for a million different reasons, but more specifically, in a recession, right, in a down market, like what are the different scenarios? Because you've gotta be able to buy this data, right? You have to get the data and you've gotta target the right people in a down market. You've gotta target people that are getting a divorce. You have to target people that are losing their job. You have to target people that are behind on their taxes. You have to target people that just inherited a property due to a death or whatever the case is. There's all of these different things that you need to target in a recession because those are the people that are gonna be selling. And if you're just marketing to absentee owners, okay, in a down market, in a recession, then the odds of you talking to a bunch of motivated people all day long are not very high. Therefore, you're probably not gonna do as many deals. You wanna make sure that your targeting, right, your target market is on point in a recession. And again, I don't wanna to have to keep saying this, but you have to provide a solution, right? Wholesaling is all about providing a solution. So in order to provide a solution, you've gotta think, what is the problem, right? Well, the problem is everything we just mentioned, right? The problem is there's 10,000 different problems in a recession that people go through and that people face. So you've gotta be able to target those people and you've gotta be able to say, hey, you know, my name's Austin and I have a solution to your problem, right? I have a solution to the problem. So just remember, in a recession, you've gotta find people that have the biggest problems and you've gotta provide the best solution. And you've also gotta think about the buyer, right? What are buyers doing in a recession? I mean, ultimately, there's probably a lot of buyers that'll get out of the market, right? There's a lot of fix and flippers that they'll get out of the market. Their margins just don't work in a recession. They're not willing to take the risk. You know, you have different people that have different risk tolerances, right? So what you have to remember is that in a recession, not only do you have to think about the seller and where the seller, you know, their, pro or their problem and their issue and how to, how to provide a solution to them, but you've also got to think about the buyer because as a wholesaler, you're the middleman, right? You're the middle person. You have a seller and you have a buyer and you're connecting them together. 
One main thing to remember is that buyers probably just want a steeper discount, right? When they're buying property in a recession, no different than if you're watching this video right now, you would want a deeper discount if you were buying a property in a recession. So if they were buying before at, let's just say 75 cents on the dollar, now they probably wanna buy at 60 cents on the dollar, or 65 cents on the dollar. I know it depends on the area, obviously, that you live, um, you know, in some places it might be as low as 50 cents on the dollar. In other areas, it might be a little higher and it really just depends. But what you've got to do is you've got to align yourself with buyers that'll tell you, right? What, what are you looking for? Obviously, there's uncertainty. Obviously, there's fear. Obviously, there's panic, right? Obviously, there's things that are happening. But, you know, at the end of the day, the show on some level must go on. So if you want to be a successful wholesaler, um, you know, these are questions that I would be asking. Look, at the end of the day, well, first of all, if you're still watching this video, smash the thumbs up button, please. Um, I'd really appreciate it. It helps uh, me and the YouTube algorithm, you know, put this video in front of a lot of other people that hopefully um, this video will help. But, you know, at the end of the day, my thought is that wholesaling is actually more lucrative in a recession than in a regular market, right? You've got to get more creative. You've got to be a little bit sharper, right? You have to sharpen your pencil a little bit. You have to go to the tool shed and you got to sharpen your tools, your skill set a little bit. But I really think that there is a ton of opportunity in a recession. Now, obviously, we're just talking about wholesaling here. I think there's opportunity in other industries as well. I'd also be happy to make videos about that in the future on this channel. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. And if you haven't gotten started in wholesaling, let me know. Drop in the comment section. I would love to know, are you already wholesaling? What market are you in? What is the market doing, right? What does it kind of look like for you? Um, if you've never wholesaled a deal, uh, let me know. I would love to help you any way that I can. I really appreciate you watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.